if you're driving an electric motor just about every time it's going to be useful to know and be able to control the rotational speed of that motor. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at measuring the rotational speed, the RPM, of an electric motor. So what we've got here is a little uh, DC motor. It's attached to a reduction gearbox and it's got a wheel on here. This is one of the motors I use in my Let's Build a Robot project. Check out that playlist if you haven't seen it. Now attached to the motor on the one side is a wheel. And attached to it on this side is one of these little encoder wheels. And you can see it has spaces in there. And then on top of that wheel, or around it, or surrounding it, however you want to call it, is a light braking sensor, which counts the pulses. And by counting those pulses of light and dark, we are able to determine the RPM of the motor. Once we know the RPM of the motor, we can control it. Now, just for this beginning demo part here, I've got it hooked up to my three volt power supply, and then I have everything hooked up to the uh, oscilloscope. So if I power up the motor, you can see that light blinking there. Let's see if I can slow it down a little. There, now you can actually see the fair bit of the light blinking. That's about 10 hertz, which is about the limit of the human eye. And then if we look at the scope, you can see it's showing us 10 Hertz and we're getting a square wave pulse. Now if I turn that up, we're getting 66 Hertz and that LED looks like it's on solid. So while this is useful, we want to know how we can control this with Arduino and that's what we're going to do next. So the first thing that we need to know is how many holes are there in our photo interrupter wheel. So I just started counting, I marked each one with a sharpie and I got 20 holes. So then I set this up here. Let's go over it and then uh, show you the code and everything. So first of all, this is just a 0.96 OLED screen. It's connected VCC to a five volt rail ground to ground. Uh, SDK goes to A5, SDA goes to A4. Then five volts and ground I've broken out from the Arduino and just brought up to the power rail. I have a um, LED on pin 13 and my code's also going to blink the onboard LED, this is just easier to see. And then I have the output from our photo interrupter going to analog zero and then it's just taking its power from here. So far so simple, right? Okay, let's go and take a look at the code. Okay, here's a code for the Arduino tachometer using a photo interrupter. Only using one library here, the wire library. Uh, well, two, I'm sorry. We also have the Adafruit SSD 1306 library to drive the OLED. Right here, we create an instance of the Adafruit SSD 1306 called Display. Then we just declare some variables. You can read uh, the descriptions if you decide to use this code. In our setup, we start the OLED. 
And uh, this little bit here on the end, if you haven't bought your OLED from Adafruit and you're having trouble getting it to turn on, it might be the hex address is wrong. This is the proper hex address for most of the Chinese displays. Adafruit's looking for an OX3D, so give that a try if you have a problem. Then we show the buffer, wait them 10 milliseconds, clear the buffer and the display. We begin our serial comms and set pin 13 for output. Now down in the main loop of the program, we're going to set value to analog read zero. So it's going to give us a value. And if that value is less than the sensitivity, which we set up here, then we will start counting. If not, we won't. Either way, we will set the status of the pin either high or low, depending on whether or not we're counting. And then we're going to detect that there's a change. So if there's been a change between light and dark, we'll increment the counter and remember the last state. Then we'll do our maths and we'll say, if some time has passed, then we're going to create a double variable called RPS rounds per second. And it is the double of counter divided by the number of slots in the wheel divided by two times a thousand uh, divided by our value for milliseconds. We'll also do the same thing for revolutions per minute. We will then set up the display. Boom, boom, boom. I decided not to print the rounds per second on here because, I mean, really, who cares about rounds per second? But it's there if you want it. Then we're going to display the rounds per minute. Uh, we're telling it what units we're using. Then we'll display our return value from that math above. Show everything. Reset the counter. Remember what time it was. And start the whole thing over. Pretty simple. Uploaded the code. And the program is finished setting up. Let's uh I guess I'm all the way zoomed out there, aren't I? Just trying to get you guys a nice view so you can see everything in one picture there. Can I do it? Maybe. Pardon me for all this dicking around here while I'm trying to get things going. Okay, there we go. Now, there's no flickering on the OLED. That is just a feature of the rolling shutter of the camera. All right, let's power up the motor. And there you go, you can see our LED blinking in time. And we're getting 48 or so RPM. Now, I didn't do any averaging here. So just like my ex-wife, there's gonna be a little jitter going on, a little jiggle. But uh, you get the idea. Then, if I increase the RPMs, you can see it goes up. And uh, the higher you go, the easier time it has counting. That's about as high as I dare drive that motor. And let's see how low we can get her to go before the motor drops out. I'm not using PWM here, I'm just varying the voltage and amperage, which would be what? Bueller, Bueller. That would be the power. All right, let's see, can I get it any slower than this? Try, oh, that's about as slow as I can get her there. So, I hope this helps you guys out. Uh, we're going to do more. This is going to be the first part in a multi-part series. Uh, this is counting the RPMs. And next we're going to control the RPMs. Then we're going to put everything together and create what's called a PID loop. So that you can set, say, you know, 50 RPMs. And even if there's some drag on your wheels, you'll get the 50 RPM. So, 
like I said, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. And a huge thank you to all my patrons. I'm out. Peace.